everyone, and welcome back to Homestuck Squared. Welcome, Aleph. Welcome, Max. Welcome, anyone viewing anonymously. Uh, tag wasn't changed, neither is game. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. I did fix that. <laughs> um, sounds flaming lipsy. Interesting. I have heard of the flaming lips. I'm not too familiar with their particular sound. Uh, okay, let's get those off the screen. Welcome back! Uh, we have uh, one more chapter of Homestuck Squared to go over today, uh, and that will be the last one for a whole month, because uh, they're taking the month of June off. Um, before we start, there's a little bit of community news, and as you can see, I've got a couple other links open at the top here. Uh, I did start off Wednesday's Butterfly Soup by sharing a few resources and ways to help uh, with the current Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, so I'm starting off with that again. It's the first two here are more on the educational side of things. Uh, this was someone pointed out that uh, Malcolm X's speeches are all on Spotify. So if you have a Spotify account, then that is a great resource to tap into. And then of course Spotify has free trials if you don't. So it is a nice, long, hefty list. Lots of listening. Lots of listening material. Uh, let me just link that. And once again, I'm linking specifically to the Tumblr post rather than the resource itself, just so I'm giving you a easily shareable version to spread this around. Um, and the other educational resource I have here, someone asked, could you recommend some anti-police literature for a newbie? So, this is just a whole slew of resources. We've got, you know, like, there's, you know, stuff about uh, prison abolitionism, there's stuff about, you know, uh, police and fascism. It's just, it's a whole whack of really great reading material to take a look at. Um, oh shit, I haven't been updating my YouTube doc. Okay, I gotta make sure that I'm putting links in every place. Um, but yeah, that's, I'm... Uh, excited to dive into those because I will admit I have fallen to the trope of uh, you know being like these are my stances this is how this is how I feel about these things I have these strong beliefs but not necessarily having like the academic background to discuss it you know what I mean or like someone will you know be like we need to abolish the, the police force and someone be like yeah oh yeah well what what's who's gonna do the stuff that they do <laughs> you know my response would be like uh you know i i don't i haven't thought out exactly how it would work but like i just know that this has to fucking stop because it's unjust and inhumane um so here is the academic background so i am looking forward to getting that did i copy the right link um <laughs> sorry i'm trying to talk and organize my links at the same time here uh, I'm pretty sure that's the right one. Gonna have to take one second to double double check that. Um, Rev posted some tips on rides and protests on his Tumblr account. Oh, sick. Yeah, I I think I will try and... Okay, good. That was the right link that I copied. Um, yeah. I think maybe I'll try and get some, some kind of resources for that to be links for tomorrow. I kind of like the idea of just, like, grabbing a couple of things that I see throughout the week and then highlighting them at the beginning of streams. Um, but yeah, just because that's not something that I have uh, any lived experience with, um, participating in riots and protests, and I can't go out right now because COVID will probably end me. Um, <laughs> uh, I just, I'm, I'm so terrified of being like, look at this helpful resource, and then it ending up being like, actually, that uh, is incredibly harmful. <laughs> and it's like, oh shit. I, uh, yeah, I'm just nervous about spreading harm harmful uh, information, but I will put the research in, I think. Uh, grab some things for tomorrow. Um, okay. Thing that is in front of my face. <laughs> um, this is a the retirement fund for Miss Major, uh, who was... Here, I'll just, you know, read the post. Miss Major was there at the start of the Stonewall Riots, was an early leader in the uprising until the pigs arrested her, and has al has almost completely been erased from the narrative, even though she is still alive. Um, yeah, so Miss Major was a leading member 
in the Stonewall riots. Um, she's a black trans woman. She's got, I mean, the post, you know, the post is there. I'll, suggest, I'll send you the, uh, the link. Post that in the chat. Post that in the document. So again, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, all of the links that I'm talking about will be in the description below the video. Um, so all of those are at, uh, there for your perusal at your leisure. Um, but yeah, she is, she has a retirement fund, um, so that's a good place to support. And final one, uh, thank you to Aleph for sending me the link to this. Um, this is a game bundle, uh, on itch.io, um, and they are raising money for the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund and the commu and Community Bail Funds split 50-50. This is fucking, there's so much, where's the, where's the number? It's on the screen somewhere, 700, 744 items. Absolutely a preposterous number of games. Um, and again, they're fundraising for the NAACP, the legal defense, and for community bail, and it's just packed. Um, minimum five dollars. Of course, you can donate more if you'd like. But yeah, I recognized a couple on this list. Um, Oxenfree, Desktop Goose was one that I uh, was considering using for bonus streams, trying to play The Sims 3 while the desktop goose is yanking my mouse all over the place and being disruptive. Uh, Night in the Woods. Uh, one Shot is in here somewhere. I saw that one when I was browsing before. Um, ah, Pet the Pup at the Party. It's another one that I was like, this one might be fun for just, like, chilling. But yeah, it's a massive collection. It's going for, of course, two fantastic places. Great ways to help out with the movement right now. And yeah, so. If you have the five US dollars to spare. You know, I will specify US dollars because no website ever feels like it's necessary to specify and I just, you know, I I mean, I've come to assume that basically every website is in US dollars and says it's until, unless it says otherwise. Um, but yes. So those are some educational resources, some places to support, and moving forward to community homestuck news. Um, so I'm here on the frequently asked questions page because uh, the logic behind this decision I do not understand, but individual spoiler warnings, content warnings at the the top of each chapter for example the last chapter that we read the chapter nine they had this content warning for abuse that was under the little spoiler bar um those aren't there anymore for any chapters um and so they've added this so i will read the statement that they have posted here what audience is homes squared appropriate for what content notes should i keep in mind before reading Homestuck Squared Beyond Canon is a work best enjoyed by the, by mature readers and includes sensitive subjects. Like Homestuck and the Homestuck epilogues before it, it will engage in, with serious subjects with an occasionally flippant and comedic tone. These subjects will include abusive situations and relationships, maladaptive behaviors, substance abuse, sexual situations, mental and physical illnesses, violence, blood, political repression, xenophobia, discussion of bodily functions, and many others. The Homestuck Squared Beyond Canon team is diverse in background and perspective and write and create art about difficult subjects with a synthesis of their personal experiences. The team's primary objective is to create an environment where collective support is afforded for these highly personal expressions of artistic intent. Readers with traumatic triggers are encouraged to discuss the material in Homestuck Squared Beyond Canon with a trusted friend before engaging with it. So, I mean, I this is a decent statement, but it still feels like a big step backwards for them to take the individual content warnings off of chapters. I really don't understand the logic behind doing that. 
at all. I don't get it. I just, like, why? Uh, yeah, so... They did that, I guess. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, well, that's not all I have to say about that. I think it was a stupid thing to do, but... <laughs> that's... <laughs> that is an update. That is community news. They have made this change. I think it's quite ridiculous, and, uh, that they shouldn't have done it. But, here we are. Um... On that note, <laughs> what is the point of removing the trigger warnings and putting them out of the way? That's exactly, right? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> I do not understand. Like, I mean, what? Like, that was one of the biggest complaints about the trigger warning list for the epilogues, was that it's this massive wall of text before a 200,000 word piece of literature, and there's no way to tell where those things are going to pop up. I mean, I don't, because, like, like, I don't, I think, I especially don't understand, because it was a member of the Homestuck Squared team, like, it was Kate Mitchell who put together, after the epilogues, a Medium post that was a list where those content warnings were like, she sorted the content warnings out with all of the chapters, which was really great. It was, a, it was a good resource. And, like, they added some other content warnings to that list, to that chapter-specific list that weren't even on the original work. That was really awesome. So I don't understand why they removed it from here. Uh, site is currently undergoing edits according to Aisha. Hi, Max's Bird. Hi, Max's Bird. Um... Okay, so, yeah, I'd heard something, I thought that I'd seen something along the lines about that, but I couldn't remember exactly what it was or where I found it, so I didn't want to, I don't know, source and cite an unre unreliable resource. But, okay, so if Aisha has stated, going to be getting some larger changes during the June break. Okay, so, on the, on the PJ and Pod Discord, okay, well, I'm not... I am in there only only for notifications. I I actively participate in very, very few Discord servers. Um, okay, well, that's good then. Um, fingers crossed that they end up implementing... No, I, I trust you on that. I'm, rem I'm remembering... Because where I... Okay, yeah. Where I... I'm remembering now where exactly I heard about it before was in a different Discord server um, trusted community member had also said that they had spoken directly with Aisha and that Aisha told them the same rough thing that like they're doing a lot of changes to the website so that's yeah I, I, I don't like to get into like quote unquote receipts for anything anyway that just makes me squeamish um but um uh, yeah no I'm, I'm good with those screen grabs um yeah i'm hopeful that they will maybe they're just looking for a better way to implement it i guess what i'm thinking now is they don't understand the logic behind taking them down now without a replacement to anyway yeah so if, okay okay so changes changes are coming it makes sense that they'd be fiddling with some things while they don't have to think about posting by a certain time okay um, on that note, I, ah, oh shit, I was gonna, never mind, no, it's good, it's good, I'm good, we're good, um, this, this is a short, so the chapter, uh, chapter 10 is on the shorter side, most of these panels don't have any text to go with them at all, um, but, uh, Homestuck Squared site got updated before the Homestuck site. Uh, yeah. Yep. Well, because, I mean, the Homestuck Squared site has a team taking care of the website that actually fucking cares about it. <laughs> Unlike Viz Media. 
Oh, but yeah, that I'm still waiting for the other shoe to drop on all of that stuff that was linked to the MS Paint Adventures domain name or server or whichever whichever part of that chain uh wasn't working. Yeah, the so the missing assets for Homestuck proper are back in place. But it appears that rather than actually fixing the website, they just put back whatever, whether it was the do- the domain name or expiring, the redirects expiring, the server going offline, whatever part of that chain between homestuck.com and mspaintadventures.com expired or stopped working or whatever, they just put it back. So they haven't actually... To the best of my knowledge, it does appear that they have not actually moved any of those things onto the new website, which I don't understand why they would do that. But yeah, the missing elements from the original comic are back in place for now. (laughs) That still doesn't alleviate the issue of things being hosted on another website. Still doesn't alleviate the issue of certain flashes still not... There's like a... I think it's just a few of the bonus ones at this point, if I remember correctly, that don't have any non-flash alternatives. Um, Still doesn't fix the, you know, the fact that their alternatives, a lot of them are really crappy quality. Um, and I will take another second to promote to you all, um, Homestuck Archived, uh, which is being put together by Wakraya, who runs Homestuck Examination on Tumblr, um, and link that there, um, End of Act, yeah, End of Act 1 still doesn't play the music properly. End of Act 1, their HTML5 replacement still out of sync with the music at the end. Um, but, yeah, actually, let me get that on screen. Let's, uh, there we go. Um, so, Homestuck Archive, this is a, a archival project done by uh, Wakraya, who runs Homestuck Examination on Tumblr, and it is, right now, only the first two acts worth have been uploaded, but they are uh, high-quality versions of every Flash, and I know that she's been working on this for a really long time, and I think to the best of my knowledge, she's like mostly finished with the finicky like editing stuff um but you know like she hasn't just made sure that the visuals were high quality she's updated the audio quality as well by using the high quality versions from the albums and as well as like there's a couple of them that she said you know oh they there were like edits made between the album version and the flash version and she, like, made the edits to the songs that need to be made. Like, she's been putting so much hard work and effort into this. She, I just appreciate it so much. She's doing beautiful work. So, you know, if you are looking for high-quality versions of the Homestuck Flashes, this is where to go, at least for the first two acts. Um, she's, wor- she's, she's working on getting the next ones up. But, uh, there was a re- re- replacement for... Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. They don't care. Yeah. They do not. They really do not. But, uh... Yeah, so that's a project to keep an eye on as well as they continue to upload things. Um, But, you know, 
like, the. Eh, <laughs> I could go on and on and on about all the things I've fucking up and all of the different solutions that they could go through. That and all of the different solutions that fans have already been working on for ages. Um. But yeah, no, December twenty twenty. I'm hoping to have this Homestuck reread that we're doing right now finished before the end of the year so that we don't run into uh, the issues. So that we can get just that last Homestuck reread done with all the original flashes on the website. I know that it's possible to still access that kind of stuff through um, Wayback Machine, but... Uh, these videos are awesome though. Oh yeah, no, well, like Will Cryer's just been doing a beautiful, gorgeous job um, working with these video ones. <laughs> Microsoft Edge, yeah. Worst comes to worst, I'm there's there's there will always be workarounds. It would just be so much easier if I didn't have to think about that though, <laughs> and I could just you know do it with my browser. Yeah. Ah. Uh. I, oh, nope. I was about to... I caught myself just in time. I am not going off on another completely unrelated tangent. I was about to start, but I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> Homestuck squared. Here we are. <laughs> I do believe it is roughly about the time that we should probably start reading the chapter. <laughs> I believe it has been quite a long discussion. Good talks. It, it is time to continue along in this journey on Deltratus, as we can see from the intriguing uh, trees, which we will learn more about soon. Um, chapter 10. I wonder what they taste like. And it's getting a little bit brighter. And we're up. <laughs> well. That was pretty fucking stupid. <laughs> oh, sweet Terzy. Falling asleep here is just asking for trouble. Nodding off like that underneath an arboreal ambulator. Who knows what could have happened? Yeah, all right, all right. Get off my case about it already. It's not like I did it on purpose. We're just lucky there isn't any wind at the moment. I've established that this is why they move. The ambulators are plants in the strict sense, but they but exhibit locomotive behavior due to their unique construction. The main body of the plant consists of a network of hollow tube-like growths through which air may travel. These networks are so sophisticated that the shifting in pressure inside the trunk and branches can cause the entire plant to uproot itself and begin walking, provided the conditions are right. This process, while majestic, can have drastic effects on the planet's surroundings. Brain ghost Vriska. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, get, get off my case about it. Yeah, alright, get off my case about it already. Brain ghost Vriska. <laughs> Okay, so we're starting to see some of the little creatures that Dirk and Rose have come up with. So this appears to be the bunny. Um, the Rose's knit version specifically, or well, I'm looking at the red eyes and I'm thinking Maybe the one that Jade made with Jake? I mean, like, they have official Homestuck merch in there, so I'm not even gonna try and do any sort of... Oh, where could they possibly have... How could they possibly have access to that item? Where could they have gotten it from? Look, if they have a, the fucking bro strider body pillow on hand, then, like, I think they can just get things from wherever the fuck they want. Um... You know, the little sippy dudes coming up. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, me too. They're so cute. Um, this appears to be the bunny. This looks like the body of a troll grub. Um, 
and then six legs, not eight. So this isn't combined with a spider, but with some other sort of insect, I think. Do troll grubs have six legs? I'm gonna. Con I'm just continuing that line of thought. Dirk has the Jade Harley. Dirk has the Jade Harley cup. That as well. Yeah, Dirk also has the Jade Harley cup. Um, just alchemize a copy of Jade's drawing modus and make whatever. That's true. That was a powerful fucking modus. The that was Pictionary, right? Oh my god, why is my mind blanking me right now? Um, fourth pair of legs form the false ears for its bunny camouflage or, or mimicry. Interesting. Interesting theory. Here's, here's, here's an oddball that I thought of. Looking at these striped legs makes me think that maybe Rose threw her scarf into the mix. Because why not? <laughs> mm -hmm. the constant shifting of the soil creates large crevices and crevices and ravines almost instantly redirecting water courses and altering the landscape over and over with each stride oh, oh what have we here a strange creature seems to have become trapped in the shifting terrain However, it seems undistressed by the dangerous situation in which it finds itself. Perhaps it calls this precarious place its home. Hmm, it seems my investigation of this bizarre planet has only just begun. I wonder what they taste like. <laughs> so we're getting into some textless panels here. So this... Okay. I'm thinking... Ghost Charles Dutton and Fidu Spawn? Rose making her joke creatures means that she's gonna accidentally win. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. We get mm, the conversation there's conversation coming up talking about how that conversation how that competition's really going, and I'm so excited to get to it. Um Yeah, I'm Wondering if this, like, the spiky whatever at the top is, like, a type of fetus spawn that we just didn't see, or if this is from another object thrown into the mix, but this is absolutely the face that was on the duddle. <laughs> Min-maxing by randomization, yeah. Keep forgetting to catch up. It's all good, you know what? We're getting caught up right at the moment. You're in the right place. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, and I love, like, I love the aesthetic of, like, this whole panel, really. Like, the little glowy blue, y'all. I love, <laughs> I love the waterfall in Undertale, <laughs> and that's what these little glowy blue mushrooms are reminding me of. Um, oh god, what's the YouTube link? I, why do I, what, hmm? I can't pick that up. No, really, I can't pick that up. Are you dense? I can't pick that up. <laughs> Read my lips. I can't pick that up. <laughs> so that uh, does keep going for another minute, but that is, according to the description, Sam, from Sam and Max, hit the road. Um, which I missed out on those games as a child. Oh my god, this video was uploaded in 2009! <laughs> Looking for a chance to put Sam and Max in there. Uh, well, there you are. Thank you for, thank you for sending that, yeah, grab, grab the bunny bug. Can't do it. <laughs> This planet is a war crime. Uh, yeah. Okay. Next. So this strikes me as also connected to fetus spawn. It reminds me of the biology of the horseroni thing that Tavros used in his introductory panels. Um, 
The colors are different though. I mean, because that was the other thing about the previous one that made me think that and the spikes at the top made me think there must have been something else in that mix. Because Fidu Spawn, we've only ever seen yellow and red for the host plush, and creatures as like purple. Uh, and I mean, of course, there's other modifications that make it kind of like it could be, it could be Fidu Spawn, Horseroni with like. An actual horse or maybe like a unicorn because of the horn has to fit in there somewhere colors are easy to change with alchemy probably especially when you're combining paradox goo yeah yeah I'm sure that uh, colors would be one of the easier things to modify with just a few uh, little extra flair and you can change that uh, up hmm Here's the little sippy guy. Ah, look at this cutie. Um, I'm thinking this is a combination of a salamander and a nacodile. And maybe something else in there. Because the body is a little different from both of them in that it's quadrupedal instead of bipedal. Alternatively, you could just spray paint your horse. Yeah. That, no, that sounds good. <laughs> and, uh... Hmm. I mean, hmm. There's no coloration from the turtles. But they could also be in there. This could be, I guess, if I look at the shape of the the back of the head, it, I think it's viable that this is like a mashup of all four consorts from the kids' session. Horse, yeah. <laughs> but uh, hmm, yeah. I guess the the stance, reminiscent of the turtles, the back of the head here, especially. Kind of looks like the iguanas from Jade's Planet. Body looks like a piggy bank. That's true. It does look very, very piggy bank-ish. Very round and portly. <laughs> now this fellow... It reminds me of the stuffed animals in Jade's bedroom. So I feel like there is some manthro chap in there. And potentially just some of the general, like, furry artwork from her bedroom walls. And there's dragon wings. A piggy bank, a sawtooth, a shark, a zebra, and Dr. Alphys. <laughs> uh, you know, that checks out. You know what? Fuck it. They could just be sourcing Undertale characters. They can source whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> D dragon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's some some dragon genetics playing in there. Whether that is actual dragon or whether they you know used the platonic idea of a dragon that comes from a scale mate um yeah there's some kind of dragon i'm just what is the wormy body what could the wormy body be from i think that's the one element that i'm kind of like what is going on with that because the thing is the sides of it kind of remind me of like troll technology where it's got like the kind of soap or slime colored like openings, kind of like ports. Manthro chapter sure, yeah. Uh, a lot of troll looking designs on these, like the holes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And just like the rabbit thing as a whole. Yeah, it looked very grubby. Um Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> this fucker. I, I don't know, Rose's book for, about the zoologically dubious, like, what the fuck is happening with this guy? <laughs> I mean, like, 
having a good time. That's what's up, but... <laughs> hmm. Mm hmm Looks like maybe an octopus was a crab? Mm, this one's gonna be kind of stumped. It's got whiskers. So maybe there's cat in there? Um... Maybe this is the Tentacle Princess doll. Uh, plus... Cr cr crab? And, and... A cat? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I don't want to get near it. That's, that's kind of the vibes, yeah. Is it bald or wearing a little hat? I mean... It's kind- I think that it's just bald because it looks like it's the exact same color as, like, the face part and the claws. Um, but yeah, it's got that, like, little, like, sun brim going around the top. <laughs> hmm. I mean, probably not that they could have just- thrown a hat into the mix, because fuck it. <laughs> but, um, just, yeah, definitely feels very rose-ish. And this fucker is definitely, definitely fetus spawn, plus something else. Or maybe they just made a giant fucking fetus spawn. Like, this, this looks pretty fetus spawny. Um, I'm trying to look for other physical characteristics that could maybe point to it being linked to something else. All I can think of is, like, the green coloration. Maybe that's indications of another link, or, like, the fuzzy parts or something. But this looks very, very solidly fetus spawn. <laughs> if it's bald, that must mean they're using Dirk's DNA. Oh fuck, I forgot that they started off with combining their own fucking DNA with these things. That changes... That changes some things. But also, I feel like they've added so much to the mix that, like, their own DNA influences probably, uh, relatively minimal. Oh, this one must be Dirk's, because look at the eyes. <laughs> Some pl some plant matter in this horse. That's where the vines are coming from, right? Or is it a different species? Oh, fuck, right. The vines. Right, right, right. We will get to that panel. I forgot about the vines. Okay. Ooh, some narrative reading. <laughs> narrative text to read. What, uh, what a truly magnificent beast. A chill falls over Terezi, draping her in shadows. The monster rears its gelatinous bulk up over her and unleashes a noise from its cavernous mouth that can really only be described as a squelch. A squelch made from vocal cords. Oh, fuck. Fun abandoned. Survival instincts fully engaged. Terezi runs. She throws backward sniffs over her shoulder as she tears through the scrubby cling of the planet's undergrowth, catching fractured impressions of exactly what has decided to chase her. A shuddering, twenty-foot monstrosity that somehow seems to both scamper and glide, like a centipede, rustling like foliage as it moves, as if the entire goddamn forest is bearing down on her. Her heels sink into bubbling mud. The whole landscape is fighting her. The creature is too strange for her to get a full picture of, of it like this. The problem with using smell to navigate the world is that the unfamiliar can be difficult to parse. Every whiff over her shoulder gives her another blurry glimpse of what this beast is. Rose shared her books with Terezi when she was on the ship, and her favorite by f and her favorite by far was the Compendium of the Zoologically Dubious. 
everything contained inside was just so unbelievably unlikely. This creature appears to be a combination of all of them. All of this sticking her nose backward is just asking for trouble, and with a particularly vicious twist, Terezi's ankle turns and she goes down into the mud. Counting the tongue as Rose's attempt at prototyping tentacle tentacles. Ugh. Didn't design the horse, don't blame me. Ugh. I do agree, that's fucking gross. <laughs> oh, okay. And there's the vines, yeah. So there's the mud is pink. Um, and there is the vines. Ooh, pardon me. I'm going to have some water before I start this page because it is, as you can see by the scroll bar, a longer one. This is the one that contains the majority of the text for this update. Okay. The tongue on the previous page is like octopus suckers. Yeah, it does. I noticed that as well, that this image, they've got like a kind of suckered pattern. As well as the pre previously here with this little guy, it's like crab claws, but it looks like it's got like suction cups on the inside of them as well. Okay. The centipede tree avatar of ultimate horror doesn't waste any time hauling her up by the boot, the fetid stench of the alien mud making her vision go streaky and dark. Hot, reeking breath washes over her, but her entire body is, is coated ice that ripples and spikes across her ribs and down into her gastric sac. It's fear, pure and simple. Unsurprising when being menaced by a monster, but it also doesn't last for more than a second. A cold flame that instantly burns itself out, and all of a sudden she is just deep, deeply, impossibly, indescribably tired. Down to her bones. Honestly, she really has no right to feel this, this fatigue. This crushing embrace of endless struggle. Terezi Pyrope has not had an easy life by anyone's standards, but so much of her thirteen or so sweeps have just been standing still, waiting. Huddling blind and half-dead in her recuperacoon, the soap orb burning the hideous mess the, sun's left, the sun has left her eyes, a light with hatred so layered and intense that she couldn't make sense of it. It was horrifying, that pain or fury, but also, admittedly, very boring. Then there were those sweeps on the meteor, the endless, gelatinous stretches of time in the chaos of the outer rings, searching for Vriska, ostensibly, but also maybe just for a chance to dry up, to disappear, go extinct. Terezi doesn't know if it's an attribute of her aspect or the sheer psychic damage of spending so long in the company of two humans with god complexes. Maybe it's just an inherited symptom of being conscious. But sometimes it feels like none of them are going to get out of this, alive or dead. A truncated version of all this races through Terezi's head as the monster lifts her towards its gaping mouth, hot, hideous strands of drool hitting her face. Fe fe fetid stench? <laughs> Fetid, yeah. Interesting word. But yeah, so this is an interesting internal dialogue for Terzi. Um Where do I start? I should have st I should have done this in chunks cuz I read the whole thing and I was like I'm going to talk about all this what I've done and then I was like and now I'm like oh my god, there was a lot in there to talk about. Um Let's where to start? So, basically, Terezi is in the jaws of a beast, and she's just tired. She she is afraid, and then she's like, oh, fuck. Um, ah, 
damn it, I had good things, good points to talk about as I was reading this, but I lost all of them. <laughs> oh, fuck me. But the, I mean, the, con the conclusion here. <laughs> the, the psychic damage of spending so long in the company of two humans with god complexes is a good line. Um, it's like, none of them are going to get out of this, alive or dead. She's just like, this is never going to end. We are in purgatory and we are never getting out. <laughs> and we get some uh, narrative commands in here. Stop. She doesn't hear the words exactly. It's more like she gets the impression that they are being said, hanging in the air around her like sound effects in a comic book. Stop! The monster freezes in place, and so does Terezi, although she can tell that the words aren't for her. It's still alive, she can feel it breathing, but it, ab but it is absolutely unable to disobey the word. With some undignified squirming, Terezi manages to get a hand in the pocket of her coat. Ugh, this sucks. Don't struggle. It will only it will only make it more likely to attack. How do you know that? Are you in some sort of hideous pan melt psychic communication with this towering monstrosity? Is this an ex is this an ex extension of your ravaged psyche, Lalonde? Am I in fact act currently being held in your very tentacles? <laughs> Girl, you got depression. I mean, yeah, that's the that's that's the other thing. Terz is fucking depressed. <laughs> that is the other uh, explanation for that whole train of thought. Um, Watto from Star Wars is what? <laughs> where do you, where do you think he got them? My mi mitochondrians. My brain went mito. My brain saw that and it was like mitochondrians. Mm -mm. Midi chlorians. Yeah. I don't know Star Wars lore, but uh I know the midi chlorians have something to do with the force. Um <laughs> horny <laughs> Jesus. Rose Rose voice. Stop. Uh depressed over the state of things and how she got her here or just generally? Just generally. Terezi has, you know, been, since Homestuck proper, like, showing many, many signs of depression. I mean, we see it in the original timeline, the meteor journey. She gets in such a rough state that she ends up, you know, she's in an abusive relationship with Gamzy. We see it in the post-retcon timeline in her whole pester log that she sends to Vriska and then like right before uh as remember um all all of the conversations and you know we see throughout Candy and her communications with John and the conversations that she has with John and Mead as well. So it's, yeah, just generally. There's even me being depressed. Uh, that why she tried to goad John into killing himself. Wait, when did she do that? That sounds... That sounds like... Are you referring to in Homestuck when she sends John to his denizen early? Or is there something in the epilogues that's slipping my mind? Because that sounds vaguely familiar. Okay, you are talking about the jetpack. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, at that point in the story, um, it's kind of unclear as to just how much the those mental health issues are present. Um, I don't think that her her depression is necessarily why she did that. I think. Uh, I mean, her, um, yeah, she, 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 John literally died because of Terezi then. Yeah, and that, that was, I mean, her, her, ex, I feel like the explanation that she gave to John and to Dave and Dave Sprite 
um, was pretty straightforward. I don't think she was hiding anything when she said that um, she just wanted to see if she could change things. Um, and she didn't really consider it a very big deal. <laughs> She did it because she's a little shit. I mean, yeah, basically. <laughs> she's a little shit and I love her. Um, Terzi has probably already seen so, so many Daves die at that point, so she just kind of did it for fun. Well, not ex I don't think that's connected to it necessarily because that was one of... Terzi sending John to his death was one of the very first interactions that she had with the human session period. This was before she'd even gotten into cahoots with Dave. <laughs> so she hadn't at that point seen the Daves die. I mean, I, I guess looking over the timelines, I guess she could have, yeah, she could have been perusing the timelines before. So she could have seen it through that. They do live on a hell of a murder planet. Or a, or they live on Hell Murder Planet. Yes, that is also true. They they just culturally don't think of they just culturally think of killing in a very different way than uh, human culture generally does. That's where I just finished that whole pester log actually between John and Vriska after Vriska kills Tavros um, in book six. I'm still chugging my way through book six, but yeah, I just finished that whole log between John and Vriska where they talk about like the cultural differences and the way that killing is seen on Alternia and all that kind of stuff. Um, channeling a radius chaotic energy. I love a radius so much. I also just finished reading um, the pesterlog where she's like she's alive now and she's like guiding people through the dream bubbles and that page where she's like I'm alive and I intend to stay that way and it just my heart ah, I love that page so much <laughs> it's the holy trinity with a radiant being the holy ghost jeez <laughs> uh, yeah I'm in terms of book 6 progress I am presently um I'm getting pretty close to the end because I'm about to start, um, I just finished reading the very first Doc Scratch section, the smaller one before he changes the whole website, um, where he kind of introduces himself and then Spade Slick comes by and starts stealing all the Scotty dogs. And then it jumps to him having a long, long conversation with Rose, leading up to her grimdark, going grimdark. So that's where I'm at. I'm pretty close to the end of book six. Uh, <laughs> Jesus fucking hell. Um, but yes, that is, I, I guess I've just kind of been giving updates on that every once in a while. Um, indeed. Okay. So Terzi has whipped out her phone to contact Rose. I am devastated to report that those really that those are really more vines than tentacles, and even worse, they aren't mine. I am holding the creature with the term I am holding the creature with the terminal one we have at our disposal in the lab, but as I'm sure you can recall from your brief tenure as Dave's patron, those commands can be overruled. So I think it would be best to just behave the same way you would with any wild animal and make a few and, and, and la, 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 la. can't fucking read. So I think it would be best to just behave the same way you would with any wild animal and make as few moves as you can as slowly as you can make them. Your tentacle dreams will be forced to remain the stuff of fantasy for now. <laughs> what do you mean patron? The human you took it upon yourself to troll. The one of us you chose to enact your revenge on. I never really thought of it like that. We were all trolling you. Well, most of us were. Solix did not give a shit, and Radio was dead most of the time. Tavros and Equius tried, but they were pretty horrible at it. And now that I think about it, I guess we did sort of play favorites. 
Dave and I had a lot in common back then, or at least it felt like we did. As I have come to understand it, for a while at least, we were all being steered in the right direction by a debatably benevolent force, one imposed on us by the game itself, even if we had yet to enter it. You don't believe me. No, I do. It sounds incredibly dumb and unlikely, but d but so does everything else that happens to any of us. <laughs> so, so you are doing the same thing to these creatures that some other creatures did to you and your friends. Oh yes, the debatably benevolent force they're being steered by, I believe, is referring to the exiles. I suppose that is a fair assessment. Although we were not our own creators, it was John who... I hate to break up the recap episode, but we have, but we need to deal with the situation before it gets out of hand. Specifically, the giant hand that is currently wrapped around Terezi. Is that a hand? It doesn't look like a hand. I thought it was Vine's. And how are you here anyway? I have administrative privileges. <laughs> you have administrative privileges to my palm husk. Yes. Don't let it get to you. My father has a habit of appearing in places he's not wanted. But you were saying? <laughs> I was saying that we should get Terzi down from there before continuing, before continuing our mining of the core themes in our personal narratives. Of course. I'll take care of that. Appreciate it. Oh my god, and the analogy continues. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't do that where I can see it. Do what? That thing where you get people who are not me to do whatever it is you want them to do. Mind control. I have never engaged in mind control. I don't think any human is capable of it. What I do is completely different. Sure, buddy. <laughs> Apparently Dirk does not does need Terezi, or he would have just left her there or let her die there. He needs an active rival while he waits for his other opponents to arrive. Good observation. Mm-hmm. Homestuck, Homestuck Squared ends with all the girls in Homestuck pointing at Dirk and saying, Dirk Strider more like Dick Rider before he suffers ego death. God. <laughs> uh but yeah, that is that is an interesting observation. I hadn't really, I hadn't really thought to consider why they were keeping Terzi around. Because why the fuck? I was just like, why the fuck wouldn't she? She's fucking Terzi Pyro. But yeah, needs an active rival while he waits for his opponents to arrive. To arrive. Um, yeah, because it's like, does he care really about Terzi on any particular level? I know that Rose does. That's. I am standing by that uh, notion. But does Dirk? Favorite Marvel superhero Dick Rider. <laughs> She's also a seer, so having two of those might help. Yeah, her seer of mind powers are also, I'm sure, a resource he is looking to take advantage of. Okay. But does that actually matter if it is, if it just has the same results that mind control would have? Have you considered that, Mr. Thought Experiment? <laughs> Wait, what? She's not joking? The original Nova's real name is Richard Ryder? <laughs> Big brain powers, yeah. Oh. Oh my god. Rich Richard Ryder. Yep. Okay. Nova. Interesting. I feel like I learn something new about superhero comics almost every stream. Because <laughs> y'all know what's up, and I am not on that scene at all. I am learning a great many new things. <laughs> In the right crowd for it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm reading a fucking webcomic, so it makes sense that other people who read this webcomic would also be interested in other kinds of comics. <laughs> something something Terezi has greenish blood and can plan ahead. So it helps Derp train for Callie. Hmm. 
Does he does he wear dirk shades? Oh, Richard Richard Ryder? He does not. He wears other shades. Let me look at this Wikipedia page again. He wear you know, they're like vaguely similar. They they're kind of they're like Dirk's shades in the way in the way that they're like they're closer to Garnet's shades that she had at the end of Steven Universe, the ones that were shaped like a full star. But okay, so it's it's a helmet. But like the big thing on the front, at least on the TV page. I hate this jungle. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, Terzi's not having a good time. Oh my goodness, there we go. It's a crest, okay. With the crest, that, uh, that is, and uh, the, the crest shape and positioning reminds me of, of Garnet's shades. But does that actually matter if it if it just has the same results as the, that mind control would have? Have you considered that, Mr. Thought Experiment? I have, actually. And if you want to talk about it, we absolutely can. And not just that. Whatever you want. I've got nothing but time. Okay, let's talk, then. Let's start with the ambient stop that has been hanging in the air releases. Terzi lets out a shuddering breath. She doesn't think she's been she'd been holding it this whole time but then again she hadn't really been paying attention her feet touch the muddy ground squelching between her left toes she's lost both boot and sock on her mad scamper what the fuck is going on you can make more boots i'm not talking about the boots nook breath i mean the menagerie from hell <laughs> well we've encountered a couple bumps along the road you don't say. Whatever gave you the impression- Whatever gave you that impression, Strider? The fact that we, I was one solitary glance nugget away from having my head nommed off? <laughs> Dirk needs Terezi because he's lonely as fuck and also his ego can't bear to lose 50% of his current audience. <laughs> Narration right now that made you think of Yzma. Yzma like that. Yeah. Bunts. <laughs> uh. Don't worry. It won't try that again. It may be a catastrophic and absolutely hideous failure, but it did do what it was fucking told. But it, but it will do what it is fucking told. Is that any way to talk about your slime wiggler? Slime wiggler? Sorry. <laughs> Don't you love all of your experiments equally? No. So sad. You guys really suck at this. Yeah, agreed. Wow, that was much less painful and long-winded than I was expecting it to be. What was? Convincing you that all of these designs that you have that you have come up with suck shit. I thought you would tell me that all of it is part of some grand plan. That they suck on purpose or something like that. <laughs> you just read the Wikipedia page and a dick rider gives off a teensy tiny bit of dirk energy okay good to know <laughs> well it is part of the grand plan and they do suck on purpose but not on my purpose it's rose she's remarkably bad at this voluntarily <laughs> okay i just need a sip of water before i keep going Not as much as Sam Alexander. Ooh, and what is Sam Alexander's hero alias? <laughs> Do you mean that she is trying to sabotage all of your grand creations? Oh, powerful god prince. <laughs> no, she's playing the game. That part hasn't been a problem. I mean, she... I mean, she is just making incredibly nonsensical, nonsensical decisions and refusing to back down, even when I up the ante to preposterous levels. You should see some of the, sh some of the shit she's come up with. 
I'm pretty sure I watched a vagina on legs walk- I'm pretty sure I watched a vagina on legs walk by this morning. <laughs> oh, the new Nova. Okay. Mm -hmm. Continuation of her ironic dream. Oh, God, yeah. But this- God. I love that Rose is like- Rose is just going fucking feral. Because, like- on some level, she, like, on, even though Dirk, it appears, still has a pretty solid grasp on her mental faculties, unfortunately, on, on some level, she knows that she, she, she's gotta know on some level that she's been fucked with, and this is, I feel like, I don't know potentially some form of enacting revenge on Dirk for being Dirk. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is, that's true. This is another connection. They talked about that uh, ironic game of chicken uh, with reference to naming Yiffy. Um, this is indeed an, uh, showing Rose doing that across both timelines now. Just saying, fuck it. Although, I'd be interested to hear Rose's side of this. Because this is all Dirk being like, she's being so ridiculous. Da -da -da -da. Hmm. Rose. I want to hear Rose's input. Rose doesn't speak for the rest of this chapter. Um, but I really want to know her thoughts. The seer of light, she knows what outcome is best, so she's probably trying to go against that. And she loves breaking the game. Interesting. That's true. Right, because she is... I For a second, I was like, well, but her powers have been on the fritz. But no, that's candy timeline. She is Rosebot the Ascended um, <laughs> in uh, meat timeline here. But, uh... Although, she did- didn't she say that there's something that she cannot see into the future of this planet? I feel like there was something like that within the first few chapters. But yeah, she could pro- she would be able to probably see, at the very least, what combinations will come up with what if she- even if she cannot see the whole future of the planet. You don't remember that? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe my brain is not recalling correctly. Dang it, now I gotta look that up. <laughs> Where was it? Ah. I don't think I saw that one. Despite her initial resistance, Rose has gone completely feral. You mean that she is having you you mean that she is having fun? Yes. And, and what is wrong with a little bit of fun, your highness? <laughs> Nothing. I got absolutely no problem with having a good- with having a good time while- while we see to the boring and altogether completely frivolous task of seeding the future of this planet. But she really- You expected her to be the one to hold you back instead of the other way around. No, that's not it. Yes, I think it is it. No, I think you are just disagreeing with me out of spite. That's not true. <laughs> I think that you project too much onto Rose. Okay, diving right in. Picture me rolling up my sleeves. <laughs> have I? I have never seen you wear sleeves. And you never will. <laughs> uh, Terzi and John were like an unstoppable combo. Yeah. Oh, I fucking love those two. This is... Uh, Oh, she is also somewhat under Dirk's control, yeah. So maybe he wants some conflict, right? However, Terezi isn't playing along with what she is supposed to do either, so she's just giving a logical reason that explains the conflict. Hmm. Yeah, I guess if Dirk really wanted to push the envelope, he could keep probably complete control over Rose. Because he certainly pretty much fucking did that before. <laughs> Or, well, that was pre-ascension, so we don't know exactly how much her being post-ascension would affect something like that. 
By project, do you mean that I expect Rose to be too much like myself? Oh, by project, pardon me. <laughs> by project, do you mean that I expect Rose to be too much like myself? No, I mean the opposite. You expect her to be better than you. You want her to prevent all of your worst tendencies, the way I used to with Riska when we were morales. Rose and I aren't morales. I know it might look similar from your perspective, but human familial bonds- Blah blah blah, yeah, I know all about your human family bullshit. It sucks. I don't understand why anybody does it. Why would you want to be stuck with someone just because they come from the same slurry that you do? I don't know. You're expecting Rose to catch you when you go too far. She isn't going to do that, I don't think. In fact, I think she is more likely to go to, to go too far than you are. What makes you say that? Or what makes you say that? I don't know. Just a feeling, I guess. I might not be a god-modded dork in cosplay, but I'm still a seer. And I have spent way more time with the two of you than almost anyone else, which is incredibly depressing to think about. Anyway, if you don't like the way Rose is doing things, why don't you just not mind control her into doing the right- into doing- Why don't you just not mind control her into doing it the right way? Problem solved. So, you know, more likely to go too far than you are. What makes you say that? And I'm thinking back to where I am in book six right now with um, Rose and her conversations with Doc Scratch and, you know, things like her even further back than that, blowing up the gate, ripping the planet apart, um, you know, and generally going a little, what could arguably be a little too far in breaking this game. I mean, I don't think that going grimdark, while it ended up being, of course, important to the alpha timeline, da da da, um, I don't think that was her intention. <laughs> but, uh, indeed. Okay, almost done. I've made the decision to freehand this one. I'm not planning to influence Rose's decision in any part of the contest. Otherwise, it's too easy and barely worth doing at all. Ugh, no matter what, you always choose the most boring option, Dirk Strider. So you're saying you want me to mind control Rose? No, I'm saying that I think you are a coward. Perhaps I will tell her that you have been whispering your strange little incantations in her ear over the last few sweeps. Like a creepy weirdo. No, you won't. If you were going to, you would have already. The two of you have, the two of you sure have been, have been spending enough time with each other. <laughs> now who's being creepy? So what are you going to do? Start over? We're gonna have to, I'm thinking. We're gonna have to, I'm thinking. I'm not sure how Rose is going to react to scrapping all of her precious little boys and girls, though. Boys and girls. Ooh, of course, Dirk. Unless you think I'm still projecting my image of what I think Rose should do, and she actually won't give a shit. No, I think she'll be- she will be conflicted. Unless you mind control her not to be. Not mind control. Whatever. <laughs> and that is where we leave Deltratus. And that is where we leave Homestuck Squared for a whole dang darn month. Um, so, it will be, I do hope that we get to see the conversation that happens between Dirk and Rose. I do hope we get to see more Rose, period. Because I wish there was more of her in this chapter. I, I love Rose. And also, I just, I really want to hear her side of this. Um, but we're not going to hear anybody's side of anything for a little bit because, once again, they're taking the month of June off. Um, and of course, we talked about it before, they are apparently doing a number of changes to the website over the month of June. So we will, uh, at our next time we resume, um, we will be able to take stock of, uh, what changes have been made and how they're moving stuff forward. Um, Dave when? Probably not till Callie is required to show up. 
Dave, right, yeah, Dave bought specifically. Um, yeah, they're kind of uh, part of the wild card crew that hasn't really gotten any screen time as of yet. Um, I, if I, if I remember correctly, I don't believe they've even gotten like a cursory mention in the narrative text. Um, but yes, I do hope we get to check in with them at some point as well. Um, but yes, that is where we are leading off for tonight. Tomorrow is Homestuck Reread. We're going to be back in that Homestuck Reread. Um, we're going to be starting from... Oh god, that's right. <laughs> we're starting from Tavros' introduction, so we're going to start off with me being mad at Andrew Hussey, but... <laughs> Don't let that discourage you from coming. We're going to be a good time. We're going to swing things in a positive direction. But yes, we are in the middle of Act 5, Act 1. Not in the middle of. We're pretty early in Act 5, Act 1. But that is where we're at. Act 5, Act 1. Uh, getting into that uh, troll story. Getting all the drama. Um, song before stream. Oh shit. Let me check channel points. I think I might have to turn that back off. Did I turn it off in the first place? Oh, yes, that is true. I've added a... Okay, yeah, everything is turned on. I don't know why I thought I turned a few things off and then forgot to turn them back on. Yeah, because I tried to uh, turn off like break request song request song uh or request break song y'all my brain um just for the butterfly soup stream because we haven't been taking breaks or didn't take breaks in those since those are now done um but uh yeah we can do put in your request 660 Boom dollars. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, speaking of bonus streams, uh, tomorrow's Homestuck Reread. Next Wednesday, we start a new bonus stream game. Her Tears Were My Light. Um, that uh, was the other game on the poll. We did Butterfly Soup versus Her Tears Were My Light. Butterfly Soup won, so we played it first. But as promised, we're still playing Her Tears Were My Light. Uh, so that's what we're starting next Wednesday. I'm very excited to get into that one. I don't really remember much about it. I'm just pretty sure that it's kind of gay. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> um, Doc Scratch or MSPA Reader? I am MSPA Reader biased. Personally. That is my feeling. Um... Yes, indeed, if there's any other opinions. <laughs> mm, what am I looking at here? Sorry, I'm getting very distracted. Um, so, pop in that request, Phoenix, because I gotta start winding things down here. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for uh joining me on this little journey to read and review the latest chapter of homestuck squared um stay safe out there and uh yeah tomorrow homestuck reread it's happening and next wednesday her tears were my light there is that uh break song or end of stream uh, video request link. Um, so, with that, I will bid you all adieu. I will see you all, all hopefully, back around here tomorrow for a little more homestuck. Have a lovely rest of your day, whatever you may be getting up to, and good night.